Well, my father uh, became involved in that kind of a business when he was 15 years old and uh, opened up his own, his first skinny cigar shop and uh, then parlayed it into larger and larger places and then eventually the 500 Club. He became the um, sole owner in 1949. Um, I was born in 1950 and um, I remember a lot about living, because we lived above the club, and I remember a lot about that. And my childhood was very different from anyone else that I knew, and um, very exciting. Um, in the summertime, when uh, the entertainers, whether it be Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, Frank Sinatra, anybody of that elk was appearing there. We certainly, my father had it very well um, insulated, but you could still feel the excitement. It was all around you. You couldn't, you couldn't escape it. I would get up in the morning and the 500 Club was my playground. I went downstairs and taught myself how to play the piano, play the drums, and at night when the musicians would come in, they'd go, oh, she was here again. But there was a young lady from, a girl from Atlantic City that was ill and she was dying to meet Sinatra. And he was appearing at the Steel Pier at the time. And my father was able to get word um, to friends of Frank's and um, my father took this little girl to the Steel Pier and introduced her to Frank, and that's when they met, and their friendship continued until my father's death. My mother was sick for five years before. She had an aneurysm of the brain. She died in 1972. The club burned down in 1973. So in within a year, my father lost two loves of his life. And it was very difficult on all of us. Um, and then, then, you know, then my brother came along later on. Um, his situation occurred a couple of years later. And um, that was not easy to deal with. Um, so I would say the 70s were probably uh, the worst 10 years of my life. The period of time after my mother died and the club burned down, it was difficult for my dad. But when resorts opened up and Sinatra was appearing there and Dean and Jerry and separately at that, po at that point, um, everybody would come to the house and hang out with my father and it sort of brought back a little bit of his earlier years at the 500 Club, and I, it was great for him. All those times were so, I have so many wonderful memories of that. I mean, it was really a great, great time, and it was nice to see my father enjoy his friends again because, I mean, they didn't come to Atlantic City until the casinos opened up, so it was great. I remember Bob Newhart, who did, my father did not know Bob Newhart, but um, called my father up and said, you know, Don Rickles said that I should give you a call. And he came over to the house and we all had lunch and he just hung out and meeting Johnny Carson. There were just so many people that um, I've had the opportunity to meet in my life and spend some time with and learn from. And it's something I'll, you know, I'll, ne I'll never... I'll never be able to have all of that excitement again. But the 500 Club was um, really the springboard for so many entertainers. I mean, I remember as a kid seeing, you know, it was a Will Maston trio with Sammy Davis Jr. You know, and my father said, you can get rid of those two guys. I think you can go out on your own now. You're pretty good. So, um, yeah, I mean, there, there aren't 500 Clubs anymore. There aren't places for entertainers to hone their skills. They just have to go out and 
do concerts and if they fail, you know, that's why we have so many careers today where they're like a one hit wonder or they're really hot for three years, but then you don't hear from them again. And that's because, you know, it's just, they can't get enough experience under their belt to really take off and have the longevity that the entertainers of that time in the 40s and 50s had for the rest of their lives until they died or retired. It was a very exciting time. You know, you, you meet a lot of girls from all over the state when you're in the Miss New Jersey pageant. And um, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was nice. I think it's going to really help Atlantic City for the Miss America pageant to be back. Um, I think it's a, you know, a nice experience for the contestants as well. And um, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it.